This is sort of a collaboration with another wood turner in a different continent. He is from Poland. We came up with the title before the situation the world is now in. This is a time for all of us to be united. For today, my good friend Rav and I are united by segments. This is going to be another segmented job and it's going to be based on a very friendly challenge from Rav from Second Life of Wood Turning. He watched one of my videos and just kind of joking around, he, he thought we should try to do something at the same time that's similar. So that was the challenge, but if you haven't watched Rav, go over there, I'll put a link in the description. Second Life of Wood Turning, he's really a wonderful wood turner and he's uh, very funny and entertaining. I really like watching his videos. And let's get going. Right here I'm slicing the segments out of a piece of jarra. Very pretty piece of wood. I'll glue them together. They'll be about an inch and an eighth tall. And then I'll put them on my bandsaw sled and re-slice them. So now it's time to glue them together. I'll put a piece of that little black veneer in between each one. These are really small and a little cumbersome to work with. And then I managed to set the camera up so my hands would be in the way. But you can see a little bit of it right here. So here are two segmented rings that I've glued up. I have them over on my bandsaw on my sled. I'm going to slice them into little discs and uh, we'll try to show you that. I missed a little bit here because we're having a furnace put in right now and I sort of forgot what was going on on this and I was getting things straightened out for that. I'm using a half inch wide hook tooth bandsaw blade here. There's 12 teeth per inch and I use a very slow feed rate. In doing that I generally have no sanding to do. And if any I just hold the piece by hand and lay it on a piece of 150 grit and a couple circular motions and they're ready to glue together. After each cut, I slide it against my stop, which has a ball bearing on it, and this uh, maintains the thickness that I'm trying to achieve. In this case, I ended up with 155 thousandths for each ring. All right, I have a stack of the, of the discs sliced. They're about 155 thousandths thick. I'm going to start gluing them on here. I'm going to put a piece of veneer in between. When you do something like that, it's going to want to slip and slide on you. So I have a chuck in my tail stock. It's on a uh, ball bearing arbor. And on this piece that was a glue block at one time, I've turned a little locator that fits in the 5 8 hole that I drilled through the initial rings to begin with. I can place that on here. I'll have this in my chuck and I'll show you how I get this glued together. And I have eight of them. I don't know if I'll use them all or not. Depends how tall it gets. So let's start gluing this together. I let each ring sit for a half an hour to an hour. Then I clean up the diameter and then I glue another ring on. You can see here I wasn't dressed to work out in the shop. We were getting ready to go somewhere and I wanted to get one more ring glued on here. I took a gamble and everything worked out. No glue on me. So I have three rings glued on with spacers in between each. I'm going to take my huge, huge turning chisel here and just get this down to the dimension and put a little shape on it because it's really going to be hard to reach in there afterwards. So 
So I'll go ahead and get ready to glue a few more on and we'll do the same thing. All right, this is the last uh, ring I'm putting on here besides the top. This is the diameter I'm going to have for the top opening, pretty small. Now I'm just planning on blending down into where I was at. It's going to be more of a feel than anything. Okay, last ring. There's 18 walnut segments. This is probably an inch and a quarter in diameter. All right, we've got all the pieces glued onto the mini base. Here we go. Not too much to cut off. I like that shape right there. shaping here right in the middle with this quarter inch bowl gouge. I see a little lump there. Okay, let's sand this guy up. We're going to go about 500. The small diameter it takes about that much. Lay the spinning backwards. Ready for some sanding sealer. I really soaked that on there. Okay, I'm going to spray the lacquer on. I'm using gloss. This is what I'm using. I've been using it forever. Long before they had spray cans, I've used this brand. Alright, I will be back when we have at least 10 coats sprayed on here. Got about 10 coats of lacquer sprayed on it. I've sanded with 500 grit in between each coat. I'm going to use the fine scotch bright on it. And now we will use some of the abrasive paste Slow it down a little bit. Not going to take very much. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the polishing paste on it now. There we go, that looks, looks pretty nice. Okay, I'm going to get set up to part this off.
the tenon is just about off so I think we're going to just take it off now it's flat grain it's going to snap off and carve real easy well, there it is it's off yeah that's flat grain is, can give away on you real easily but that's it it's small Okay, the mini vase is all done, but I something is confusing me. This is uh, the one I just did, and the one behind it was the first one I did, and my intentions were to make it a lot smaller than that one. My calculator might have been broken, or I multiplied instead of divided. I don't know. Wow, I guess I'll have to make another one. Let's just see how how much off this is. Well, it's not off at all. Look at that. So that's the new one, and that's the one I did a month and a half ago. So, I did make it smaller. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And a special thanks to all my subscribers. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to my channel, and you feel so inclined, please consider subscribing. Thanks again, and until the next time, I'll see you later.